Ampira, a potassium channel blocker, is the first oral therapy indicated to improve walking in patients with MS. This was demonstrated by an increase in walking speed. In healthy individuals, neurotransmission occurs through propagation of action potential, or electrical impulses, along myelin-coated nerves. The myelin sheath that coats the nerve is formed by an oligodendrocyte cell that wraps tightly in multiple layers around the axon. The high resistance of the myelin sheath prevents the electrical impulse from leaving the axon. This, coupled with the sheath's weak ability to store an electrical charge, allows for rapid conduction with little energy used. This makes the myelin sheath a critical component for axonal conductance of electrical impulses. A hallmark of MS is the loss of this protective sheath, a process called demyelination. Demyelination causes an uncontrolled loss or leakage of intracellular potassium from the axon. This results in a change in action potential. When the electrical impulse arrives at a demyelinated segment, it becomes diminished. This results in either slowing of conduction velocity or inability to sustain repetitive impulse discharges or conduction failure. The mechanism by which delfampridine, the active compound of Ampira, exerts its therapeutic effect has not been fully elucidated. Delfampridine is a small lipid-soluble molecule that crosses the axon cell membrane. Once in the axon, Dalfampridine blocks the open potassium channels, greatly reducing the uncontrolled loss of potassium. As a result, there's an increase of the action potential and improved neuronal conduction. Improved neuronal conduction may lead to an improvement in walking, which was demonstrated by an increase in walking speed in the clinical trials for Ampira. Ampira was effective across all four major types of MS disease course. In clinical trials, Ampira was effective in people across a wide range of disability, including people who can walk without an assistive device, people who use a cane or a walker, and people who occasionally use a wheelchair. Important safety information to follow. The use of Ampira is contraindicated in the following conditions, history of seizure or moderate or severe renal impairment. Ampira should not be taken with other forms of 4-aminopyridine, 4-AP, fampridine, since the active ingredient is the same. Patients should discontinue use of any product containing 4-aminopyridine prior to initiating treatment with Ampira in order to reduce the potential for dose-related adverse reactions, including seizures. Ampira can cause seizures. The risk of seizures increases with increasing ampyridosis. Ampira is contraindicated in patients with a prior history of seizure. Discontinue Ampira use if seizure occurs. Ampira is contraindicated in patients with moderate or severe renal impairment. Creatinine clearance less than or equal to 50 milliliters per minute. The risk of seizures in patients with mild renal impairment, creatinine clearance 51 to 80 milliliters per minute, is unknown, but Ampira plasma levels in these patients may approach those seen at a dose of 15 milligrams twice daily, a dose that may be associated with an increased risk of seizures. Estimated creatinine clearance should be known before initiating treatment with Ampira. Urinary tract infections were reported more frequently as adverse reactions in patients receiving Ampira 10 mg twice daily compared to placebo. The most common adverse events, incidence greater than or equal to 2% and at a rate greater than the placebo rate for Ampira in MS patients were urinary tract infection, insomnia, dizziness, headache, nausea, asthenia, back pain, balance disorder, multiple sclerosis relapse, paresthesia, nasopharyngitis, constipation, dyspepsia, and pharyngolaryngeal pain. The risk of adverse events, including seizures, increases with increasing Ampira doses. No additional benefit was demonstrated at doses greater than 10 milligrams twice daily. 
There are no adequate and well-controlled studies of Ampura in pregnant women. Ampura should be used during pregnancy only if the potential benefit justifies the potential risk to the fetus. Safety and effectiveness of Ampura in patients younger than 18 years of age have not been established. Clinical studies of Ampura did not include sufficient numbers of subjects aged 65 and over to determine whether they respond differently from younger subjects. Thank you.